Right. Uh, let's start uh, today's session. So last time we discussed about use of very basic algorithms in machine learning, that is zero R and one R. And we are going to discuss the next one under the topic decision trees. So we are going to basically look at what a decision tree is and how we can build decision tree uh, from data. So having said that, first, I think we need to understand what decision tree is. Usually it will be a tree like structure uh, where you change the orientation from top to bottom and you will have what we call set of nodes and branches. And at the end, you have something called leaves. And, and remember this decision tree will uh, create using the data we have. So let me show you an example. So this is the decision tree created for our weather data set. As you can see, in our weather data set, we have several attributes. So we have outlook, humidity, and windy. They are the attributes. And the branches will describe each of attribute values. So for example, outlook, we had three different values, sunny, overcast, and rainy. And at the end of the branches, you will have something called leaves, which represents the final classification. For example, if outlook is overcast, then we will say, okay, you can play the game. Right, now the question that we need to first work on is how a given data set, we create uh, a decision tree. So this comes with um, what we call the divide and conquer. Uh, approach to create the decision tree, which is also known as top-down induction of decision trees. So there are a few steps we need to follow. We have to start with, first of all, deciding which attribute to place in the top of the tree, which we call root node. For example, our data set, we have four attributes, right? We have four attributes. So our weather data set, we have Outlook. We have temperature, we have humidity, we have windy. And finally, we need to predict the class, which we call the play attribute, which consists of yes and no. Given this data set, we need to create a decision tree that we have seen earlier. The question is how, right? So first of all, you need to decide which attribute you are going to use. So out of the four attributes we have, outlook, temperature, humidity, and windy, we need to select one of the attribute to put it as a root node. And once you do that, for each attribute value, we have to create branches. And you repeat this process. How do you end this if you take a uh, instance in the node, if they all have the same classification, we have to stop at that point. That's where we define something called the leaves. Okay, so I hope you got an idea. And then now uh, with a toy problem, let's try to understand how we are going to generate a decision tree. Right. So the first step is, okay, you will be given a data set. So this is the weather data set that we have discussed so far in the module. And you can notice that there are five attributes including the class attribute. And then you have a set of attribute values. For example, if you start with Outlook, so let me take Outlook. So we have Outlook attribute. And if you look at the Outlook attribute, you will notice that
So Outlook attribute. You can have three different values. So you can see sunny, overcast, and rainy. So which means we have to have three, you see, values. So let's start with uh, three attributes. We have sunny, we have overcast, and we have rainy. So we have to create three branches, right? And then, so let me put the values. So the first one, let's say sunny, right? And then we have overcast, right? And then we have rainy. Then look at with the attribute value. For example, if you look at sunny, the first value, uh, sunny will be no, the second one will be no. So you can count how many times yes and no appears. So starting from no, how many times? So sunny no, sunny no, again sunny no, then sunny yes, sunny yes. So there are three instances in no, no and there are two instances with yes. So this is the how uh, the values are separated for Outlook when the value is sunny. The second one is we have to look for the overcast. Now given overcast this one, you can look at. OK, can you tell me? Can you work out these two branches and tell me what are the values come down to these two branches? Right, I named 2312. You said uh, overcast, four yeses and one noes. So we can say, okay, no will be zero, but we have four instances with yes. Right? So similar to that, if you look at the rainy, we will have yes and yes. Rainy again, no. Rainy again, no. So which means we have two instances no and we have two instances yes so this is what we have right now sorry for any we have three right so three yeses so that should be yeah it should be like this Right, now we get Outlook attribute and we create branches for uh, the three different values that's sunny, overcast, rainy, and uh, we observe its classification, right? And how the data rooted down in the tree. So originally we have 14 instances. Now each branch we have uh, again here five, four, again five. So which means we have to further work on the problem. That's what we discussed in previous slide. So you can do this for all the remaining attributes, right? And if you look at this, it will would it would be look like this. If you repeat the same thing I did it for Outlook, this is what you will get for temperature humidity and windy. And if I reiterate what we need to do right now, we have to select one attribute out of these four and we have to put it in the root node. Okay. So my question is, how do you select, right? Out of the four attribute, how do you select from the top? So, when I ask you like which one we can select as a root node, we can select uh, all the four depend on various reasons. So it's perfectly all right if you select outlook, if you select temperature, humidity and windy, because you might have different reasons for doing so, right? So therefore you need a justification why you are going to select, for example, uh, there's a machine learning algorithm called random trees where it selects the attribute at random. So any of these four attributes could be on top in a random tree. But if you look at um, uh, 
in machine learning, machine learning, we normally prefer to have simple models. So therefore, in free also, we want to have a very simplified a decision tree, a simple decision tree. If you look at and that aspect, you need that we need to stop, right? As soon as possible. So therefore, if you look at all the four attributes, only here we can see the same classification, which means we can finish up to this point, right? So that is one advantage you will get. You can identify it. Uh, which branches are simplified. In this particular case, since all the classifications are high here, we can say that, okay, we can finalize the overcast with yes. But the other two, we have to reiterate, which means we have to look for other attributes. Right. Having said that, if you look at the, the simple decision trees, you can notice outlook attribute, everything is classified here as yes, which means we can stop at this point, which we can hope that this will give you the simple decision tree. Similar to that, if you look at sunny attribute, We can notice that two yeses and three no's, which means we have to select other attributes. So depending on outlook, let's say we have decided to select that. Then next thing would be you have to repeat the same process we did earlier for different conditions. You have a template, humidity, and windy. So you can see here now, given this one, let's say the first one is A, the second one is B, third one is C. What would be your answer? Which one you are going to process? Sometime. So how we start earlier is we went through each and every attribute and we looked at what is happening with the uh, the class attribute and no you have noticed that uh, you know for all the four attributes then the next one is we have to select one of the attributes as a root node now this you can have various uh, answers because there's no one single answer for this i told you if you use random trees you will select one at a random but what our intention is Right, we can have very small trees if you smart. So outlook we already selected as a root node. Then we put other three attributes that is temperature, humidity, and windy. Right now, going back to the previous one, if you're looking on the same classification, like in this case, right, we can say that in this branch we can have humidity because it's pure hundred percent. Uh, selection for this. So humidity is high normal. This branch is done. Middle branch is also done because we said everything is yes. The third branch that we need to take care of. The, the remaining two attributes are temperature and windy. You put it there, you get this information and then you can look for the survival. Right. And finally, we have two other options, but when we uh, put it in windy, Windy gives us the um, windy gives us the the best uh, uh, accuracy in terms of uh, you are selecting attribute type. Okay, so having said that, there are a few things that we need to understand and discuss. The first one is which one is the best attribute. Which there are ways that we can find out, but at the end of the day. Right, you can see, or you can argue for one single uh, computer. Right, so when we are defining a uh, best attribute, 
we have to ask back, right? What is the requirement? So if you have, again, you will get a small tree, right? So the idea that we want to highlight here is we want to get the attribute and we have to produce the purest nodes, right? Um, that what we have seen early is very simple graphical representation, but when you go to calculation, we need some mathematical basis. So in, in, in Weka, for example, they are using information gate, right? Okay, so now strategy is like you have to select the attribute, then create as information key. So that is what we expect uh, when we talk about the decision trees. Right, now we discuss something called the computer, uh, computing information, right? So that can be done using uh, this equation. Uh, this is equation for entropy and the p-values are um, P1, P2, Pn, they yeah, are probability values. So for example, if you have P1, then the expanded version will be P1 log P1, P2, then P2 log P2. Right, so uh, that means these probabilities we can calculate by going through each of these attributes and then um, uh, for that, we can apply, we can take different uh, fractions, P1, P2, and Pn, but then again, we can have a bit uh, low one, right? So P1 log P1, P2 log P2, and finally minus Pn log Pn. That's how the formula uh, for calculating the entropy. So, uh, what, we, we, what happens in, in, in this particular case, would you take the starting point? So the value there will be like minus uh, P log P, right? So I could be any value. And then sometimes what might happen, uh, they can start with next. So in this particular case, if you calculate the, the data using send information DJ, and then finally you come up with the information uh, in 4D. And information gain in particular are known as getting this syllabus covered in the first place, and then uh, they will discuss. So this grain A, you can implement like in 4D and in 4AD. Right. So having said that, the next one is how do you calculate this? I'm not going to go into details, but then again, simply you go through each of attribute values and look at the information and you provide two values to represent yes and no in the data set. Right. Let's say we get some number if you apply same equations that we have just seen. So outlook, we have to find out uh, the information before the split and different information after the split. So that's what we have written here. We will get the information. In the beginning, we have 14 instances and then they actually rooted down to three um, uh, values in this particular case, when we say in four nine comma five, so that's for the uh, before the split, and that means you have positive years nine classes, and then negative classes, and then again we have uh, three branches. Each of these branches, this is how the values varies. We set out to quiz. Uh, sunny, overcast, and rainy. And depending on what you selected, you will get these three information. So that means you calculate the, the information before the split and calculate the uh, information after the split. So in this particular case. So if you, if you compare, you will get about 0 0.247, right? 
And if you done this, the calculation for the four, this is how, or uh, this is what we will get. So outlook is 0.247 bits. Then temperature 0 0.029. The humidity is 0 0.152 and being windy, we have 0 0.48. Which means by going through the values, we can select the outlook, right? But there are other measurements as well, how you may actually calculate this, right? So there are many others because there are various issues with information gain. So to accommodate that one, uh, there's a measurement called gain ratio. So it will modify the information gain and then it will reduce the bias. So it will take number and the size of the branches in the accounting when choosing the attribute, and it corrects the information given in by uh, talking intrinsic information of a split into account. Right. So similar to this one, I can show you again another example. We have, for example, we can use for example, the Guinea index, which is again, I'm, I'm going to talk about the implementation details. So implementation, the default is Guinea value. Very similar to the information gain, you talk about the Guinea value before the split and Guinea value after the split, the difference will take into consideration. Right. So you can see that uh, with this one, we are going to conclude our session. We mean uh, the theory, let me talk about the practicals yet. So we will use, what we have discussed is called ID3 algorithm, mainly focusing on, uh, in our case, uh, categorical value and many uh, other attribute selection criteria. We have information gain, gain ratio, gain index, chi-square, and so on. There are many ways. Okay, so with that, we'll start uh, the lab session, but let's take a small break. We'll take a five minutes break, and then we'll continue.
Okay, let me demonstrate uh, the first part. So in this one, what we are going to do, we are going to use uh, Waker Data Mining Toolkit. Uh, and then based on that, uh, we are going to create a decision tree. Uh, and, and then we are going to continue our uh, continue our discussion. So let's open up Wake uh, up Data Mining Toolkit. Right. Okay. So we have already discussed that the how we start. Let's uh, start with the explorer. And under this one, I'm going to open a file. There are plenty of data sets available here you can actually work on. So the first thing that I'm going to discuss is let's go to C program files, let's see, 3.8.4 data folder. And there are many others. So let me select first the nominal. Right, what do you mean by nominal data set? If you remember, if you click on edit here, you can notice that our data set, we have 14 instances and this is the distribution. So having said that, now, to make a classification, you can go to classification tab and you choose the trees. And then we can select ID3, for example. Uh, and then if you just say start, you will get some other numbers, which we will discuss later on, but you will get this part. This is the textual representation of the tree we have seen. So let me say with the we have visualization, you can right click on it. We can right click on uh, and we can say visualize free. This is disabled and the reason is ID3 normally we couldn't visualize. But let's change this from ID3 to J48, which is another uh, decision tree structure. So if you do that, you get the outcome. And when you right click it, visualize free, and here is the outcome. So the outcome actually from the basics that you have, uh, you know, used, and and also it uses the information gain. In this particular case, Outlook has the highest information gain, and given the others, we have. Uh, human and VT. So you can actually make some trial and error. For example, if I choose, right, days, let's see, multinomial with the we can work on. Yes. And here is the outcome.
Right. So we were discussing about creating a decision tree in Wakeham. So the data set that we have used is uh, weather data set. And under the classification, we can select um, tree structures. So the two tree structures we have discussed, the first one ID3, which will not get any visualization but textual form. But if you want to get the visualization, then we can go for J49, sorry, J48, which where you can actually visualize the tree structure. So remember that in this particular case, we are, uh, the tree is based on the data that we have uh, in your know, used, right? If you see, uh, change the data set, for example, let me go back and open another data set. So let's say we have uh, breast cancer, right? Uh, and then, then let's say I'm going to go to classify, same decision tree structure. Okay, so this is the tree. Let's visualize. Okay, so this is how we can say fit to screen. So this is the tree structure that we are, we get from Wakeham. So there are a few things we need to understand here. Now in this particular case, uh, in a tree structure that we will get from here, right? It might, it might contain numerical data as well. But what we have discussed is how to use only the nominal attribute. So let me clarify this and again come back to this place. So having said that, let's go to the no, note again. Uh, the few things that we need to discuss is how do you handle various issues? Right, three things that I would like to discuss and that's what handled by C44.5. And I told you like our version is J48, a uh, little bit improved version that 4.5. Three things we need to discuss uh, compared to the simple algorithm we have discussed early. We need to handle in the numerical data. We need to handle the missing data and we need to generalize the model. I will explain those. Right. So what we could do is to handle numeric attributes. We can uh, use again information gain. But this time, uh, when you're evaluating this, right, you look at the best split. So which means we have a split, something like this. For example, temperature is less than 45. On the other hand, the opposite of this is temperature is equal to greater than 45. Right, so let's look at this in with the uh, with numerical data. So we can now in this data set, we have outlook, no change, windy, no change, but temperature and humidity we are representing with numbers. So given that situation, what we need to do is we need to split on temperature attribute. So we can, for example, start somewhere, for example, let's say temperature less than 71.5. That means somewhere down here, and we can calculate number of positive and negative. So here, four yeses and two negatives, right? When the temperature is then 71.5. Similarly, if you look at the other part, you will also notice there are five yes instances and three no instances. So if you want to calculate the information that we have discussed early, branching the temperature variable into this might be tricky. Right? So, but when you apply the information, uh, four comma two is one branch and five comma three is another branch. And then we can calculate using like this, the equation I have given you earlier and you can find the information. And then, you can split points halfway between the values. 
and then you have to evaluate all possible uh, options. Right. The next one that I would like to discuss is uh, how do you use um, multi-valued attributes? Right now we are talking about the binary, but there could be many others as well. Right. The next one is missing values. If your data is missing, sometimes it happens because sometimes it's not relevant or it's uh, duplication. So the first task is when you're given, um, when you have mission value, uh, missing values, you can take it separately. You can think it as another variable and you can work on it. Or you can or, uh, ignore all instances, right? So you can remove any data points if it is zero. This is uh, less probable because uh, we all, I think, the support here. Third one is an interesting one. You are going to split the sentences with missing values into pieces. And then depend on that, it will take uh, multiple branches. Right. Then another thing that I would like to discuss is the pruning of decision trees. Poor pruning means you are simplifying the tree. So that means you are not going to create the whole tree. So two strategies are there. The first one is you build the whole tree and then you remove some of the parts. Second one called pre-pruning, which means you write a code and then you stop from one point, right? So this is called forward pruning, right? Usually the post pruning is preferred, right? Pre-pruning again, uh, idea is based on the statistical, statistical significant values. And then the problem in this pre-pruning, it might stop in very early, we call early stopping, right? But then there's an advantage compared to post-pruning, it will be much faster. In post-pruning, right, you build a tree and then you prune it. And then uh, sometimes uh, there are some issues, sub trees might be there due to the chance effects. Two pruning strategies usually we talk about sub tree replacement and sub tree raising. Right. And there are possible strategies, error estimation, significant testing, and MDL principle. Okay, so let's look at some information like how you may simplify this. For example, sub tree uh, replacement, where you can actually look at what is available right now. For example, in this is the original decision tree. And for example, if you look at only this part, what do you think? This part of the decision tree. And that's what we see here. So this part of the decision tree, we have replaced with bad because you see there are a lot of you know, bad outcomes, which means we can simplify say this is bad. Right. The next one is sub tree raising. That means sometimes you can remove intermediate values. For example, in, in this one, we can remove the branch B and then you will get the adjusted tree structure. Right. So we were discussing about the error estimating, right? Uh, and if you look at the software and choices, we already discussed about the VECA C4.5. Uh, I will discuss uh, in a separate note, how do you select the scikit-learn, the decision tree classifier. Right. So this is the summary of uh, defining top-down induction of decision trees. So you can use various different uh, attribute selection and then based on you can you are put to a different classes right okay the next one 
I would like to discuss uh, two more algorithms. The first one is what we call instance-based representation, which means we can use in here, the algorithms are something like k-nearest neighbor. So the difference from the previous one with this one is it will not create a model. So simply it will uh, store the instances themselves. So that's why we say the classifier name is instance-based representation. So what happens here? So we will select something called symmetry function and that function will define what is learned. And this is known as lazy learning because there's no training, but then again, uh, you test and debug. So the instance training based learning algorithms selected the nearest name and key nearest name. Right. So when you talk about the distance function, right, uh, we need to find out a similarity. Usually we can talk about the geometrical distance. So if you have only just one attribute, you can take the difference. But if you have several attributes, then you have to use the Euclidean distance, right? And then again, nominal attributes, distance will be set to one if you are different or zero, then they are equal. Right. Are all attributes equally important? You never know. Weighting the attributes might be necessary, but it's not what we need. So let's look at some mathematical background for the nearest neighbor algorithm. For example, here you can notice that uh, they have defined something called the distance, where you take the differences of the points and then you get the square root of this. This is known as Euclidean distance. Right, so the next one is uh, the, the previous one we had to rely on the square root. Let's assume that you don't have that, right? And under that, we can talk about the other matrix as well. For example, city block, uh, you know, matrix. Again, more generalized version of the, the decision trees and so on. It's called mean square skew distance, and you can see all the necessary information, but uh, you don't have a fixed value where you use a variable for doing that. Right. I think that's all I can discuss. And then we'll discuss uh, in the next week. Or maybe we can have the session tomorrow as well. Right between this, uh, the 